1950, the third plenary session of the 7th Central Committee of the Communist Party of China called for a fundamental improvement in the nation's financial situation within three years. In the early efforts to restore the national economy, a key element was land reform. China's farmers had always longed to own the land they tilled. Abolishing the ancient feudal land system was one of the greatest challenges facing the new People's Republic. The land reform law was introduced in June 1950. It stipulates that the system of feudal exploitation by the landlord class should be abolished and a system of land ownership by the farmers should be implemented. For thousands of years, the country's farmers had eked out a living from the land. Now, for the first time, they owned it. Beginning in 1950, land reform was enforced with vigor in the newly liberated areas. By the spring of 1953, all 300 million previously landless farmers in the liberated areas, with the exception of some ethnic minority regions, had been given land. The total area allocated to them was almost 50 million hectares. They also received machinery, tools, and seeds. Many could scarcely hide their joy. As masters of their own land, China's millions of farmers were eager to work hard and contribute to building a better country to live in. One farmer was so delighted with receiving his own land that he set up a wooden plaque inscribed with a poem. When the spring thunder sounded, we fought the landlord and took his land. Joyful farmers whose lives have changed are all grateful to Chairman Mao. Suihang village in Guangdong province was the birthplace of Sun Yat-sen. Under the leadership of the CPC, the villagers here finally realized the old revolutionary's dream. Following the land reform, the countryside was bursting with vitality. Irrigation works were built, draft animals and tools were acquired, and fertilizer was spread. In 1952, China produced 44.8% more grain than in 1949, as well as 193% more cotton and 64% more cooking oil. This reveals how powerful were the forces of production once liberated. With the economy recovering, China could fulfill the basic conditions needed to begin large-scale economic construction. Another new chapter was about to be written in the history of the young nation.